Hi, my name is Brody McGregor, and uh, I am proprietor of Concordia Company. It was incorporated in 1926 in Boston, and it was basically a yacht design and yacht management company. And uh, as I understand it, they moved to Fairhaven sometime in just prior to World War II, and this property was bought by the Howland family in 1940, and the boatyard was established at that time. Of particular note is the, the uh, Concordia Yawl class, which was designed in 1938. In the 60s, there were perhaps 50 of those boats came back to the boatyard for winter service. And uh, it was uh, on those boats that many of the skills and much of the reputation of the company was built. My own experience with the company, I came to work here in 1978 and was lucky enough to buy the company in 1981 and we have operated out of the South Wharf location since then. And um, we've enjoyed being here and as I think many of you know, our operations are up to uh, 300 Gulf Road, which is about a mile away. Waldo Howland uh, was the guy who sold the 103 Concordia Yalls initially, and uh, he did much of that selling right here. This table was, uh, in this location, it had a number of leaves in it, and the story is that Waldo would sit with his back to the window here, and he would set the customers uh, over in this, on this side looking out to sea. And uh, he would start talking about the merits of the boats and, and uh, he would see the customer's eyes begin to uh, wander and follow boats sailing in the harbor. And uh, that was the, uh, probably the most effective sales tool that he had was just looking out here and getting people excited about sailing. This is Concordia Boatyard, and the date is April 23rd, St. George's Day, uh, 2007, and uh, a lovely spring afternoon. We're just having a few shots taken of the uh, boatyard before Concordia Company moves its operations up to uh, Gulf Road. And uh, it's a perfect day in which to kind of see how we ran the boatyard on this property. Well, we're down the end of the dock, and uh, this is where we do put the rigs in the boats and do commissioning. And these masts you see here are aluminum masts which are uh, on horses ready to get put in the boats. Um, this boat right behind me has just been rigged last week. It has a new carbon fiber rig. Savers are built in Maine and it's actually one of the premier remaining fiberglass production builder of sailing auxiliaries left. This is a new Sabre 38, which is just being commissioned for the first time. And uh, we have actually looked after quite a lot of uh, Sabres because New Wave Yachts are here in town and they are, they are Sabre dealers. This is the new 38 and uh, owned by a guy who summers in South Dartmouth and lives in Florida the rest of the year. Using this uh, blue crane and... Uh, we actually have an electric hoist mounted within the crane and so the fine adjustment of lowering or raising the mast is done with an electric hoist with a push button um, which makes it very precise. Walk over and take a look at the spa storage sheds. In times gone by most all of the masts were stored in these sheds and as time has gone on 
first we have more boats and second we have longer masts but all of the wooden ones are still uh, stored in here. Here are a number of Concordia yawl main masts stored on the right hand side here. When they come in in the fall they are all prepped and varnished for the, for the next year. This is the base of the mooring operation. We have a number of uh, moorings in the harbor and uh, the pennants are uh, checked and replaced as necessary each year and in the winter time a, a winter stick is put on so that the pennant is not left out through the winter time. And in the spring the winter pennant is taken off and the, and the new pennant is put on. Uh, the entire mooring system is checked every third year. This is one of the very big anchors that we have used. Um, not really typical anymore but I show you some of the typical anchors that we do use a little further along. Resolute is our towboat and the guy in the red hat, Jimmy Stanton, has been here. He's the only person that's worked here longer than I have and I believe he started in about 1975. So that makes him 40 years and he's actually semi-retired but he comes back in the spring and gives us help. And uh, it's a wonderful little towboat for the basin where it's fairly narrow. The boat's only 16 feet long, has a 40 horsepower diesel engine and uh, it's just the right thing for the job. This little 31 foot boat called Kestrel is uh, designed by Concordia and built by Bud McIntosh in New Hampshire and uh, is extremely well owned and uh, every year she's just made to look as uh, near perfect as she can and a very very nice sailing boat. This is where we uh, make standing and running rigging and basically the rigging crew go through uh, and inspect everything at the end of the season and anything that is uh, worn or damaged is marked down for replacement and the uh, through the winter they're busy making halyards and uh, shrouds and four stays etc in here. Yeah this is the mechanic shop and uh, we do just about everything from rebuilding heads to rebuilding engines. We have four full-time mechanics at the moment. Um, on a rotation basis they go to school uh, either Yanmar or um, Volvo schools and are very very well equipped to uh, tackle anything that needs to be done on your boat mechanic wise. Um, happily they're all out working on boats which is a good sign and uh, we'll walk through to the uh, metal fabrication shop now. This is the metal fabrication shop basically we have a bridge port and we have a lathe and uh, we can we have some welding equipment and we can turn our skills to most anything that breaks uh, on your boat. This is the lathe uh, and over here is the Bridgeport milling machine and uh, those machines of course will get moved up to Gulf Road along with the rest of our equipment. Normally two or three Concordia yawls store in here in the winter and of course they'll be elsewhere. So this is the carpenter shop. Basically we've been able to do a lot of work in here uh, making new masts, making frames, making keel, uh, keels for Concordia yawls, uh, making boarding ladders, all kinds of bits and pieces and uh, anything to do with maintaining the wooden boats and the, the uh, wood trim on fiberglass boats, equally important. So we have uh, four uh, very experienced uh, shipwrights carpenters we call them and uh, very happy to have that work. This is what we call the intensive care unit where the boats that really need a lot of work it's handy to the shop there was a steam box set up there and it's handy to these these are two planer machines uh, and the lumber storage is down there where the no smoking sign is so this was where we did the big work. <music> It's 
my pleasure to introduce to you Kenneth Howland, the son of Waldo Howland, one of Waldo's sons who benefited from his father's sailing experiences and all the experiences that he had with Concordia and South Wharf. And I'm going to have Kenneth take over and tell us all about it and where we are today in this home and the history of that. Good morning. I'm Ken Howland. Um, we're sitting in uh, my father's living room, what uh, used to be my father's living, living room, Waldo Howland. Uh, it's where I grew up and it was originally designed to be a storage shed for uh, the pieces of my grandfather's uh, Norwegian Colin Archer designed pilot boat, the Escape, uh, which was destroyed in the 1938 hurricane. I wanted to just say a couple of things about how the Concordia Company and the wharf came to be. Uh, this area was my grandparents' summer home and where my father spent his summers and uh, so he was naturally drawn to uh, this area. Uh, he, uh, we have antecedents back into the whaling industry and so on um, and so we've been in this part of the world for a long time. Um, I could start by saying that uh, dad had a lot of experience as uh, sailing with his father uh, on small boats in Buzzards Bay and uh, then uh, ocean racing uh, and um, uh, having a, a wonderful time as a college student on famous yachts, the Flying Cloud, designed by William Hand, who was one of the most famous designers to come from New Bedford and uh, was in a number of Bermuda races and got to know John Alden and uh, sailed on uh, Fearless, which actually was a, a schooner that uh, John Alden designed in the 1920s. And actually, I sailed on the Fearless when she was rigged as a catch uh, many years later. Uh, during uh, the 20s and 30s, Dad uh, became acquainted with a lot of famous yachtsmen and sailed with them. Uh, but he gradually became uh, attracted, following his own interests, became attracted to Ray Hunt. And he and Ray Hunt got together in a company called Concordia Company in 1936. Concordia Company was a little company set up by my grandfather, Llewellyn Howland, for various investments but it turned out to be the vehicle for the Concordia Yalls and for Ray's and Dad's uh, partnership together in the early years. And um, Ray Hunt and Dad and Grandpa and a fellow named Bill Harris, who was a draftsman at the boatyard, uh, worked up this new boat called Escape at the beginning and she was not uh, really named Java uh, until after 1944 when uh, well, a hurricane again hit uh, South Dartmouth and uh, did some damage to Java where she had to be rebuilt because uh, Escape had turned out to be an unlucky uh, name for the, for the boats. Ray Hunt, uh, it was very uh, wonderful for Dad to get to know Ray because he was a wonderful designer, not only a wonderful designer, he was a genius. And he and Dad uh, worked together on a number of little boats uh, in the 30s. And uh, they worked on a number of little boats. Dad was always very interested in family cruising and he liked uh, stylish boats and comfort and simplicity and he loved materials. I mean, if you were able to be in this room and look around this room, you would see uh, a lot of what is called Rochester mahogany, that is local white pine on the sides, and the floor is uh, black walnut, and the beams are locust, and uh, out actually at the entrance to this uh, room is the decking from the escape uh, which was salvaged and put into this house. So Dad loved the materials. And I'm telling you all this because it really goes into the, what sort of values Dad brought to the Concordia Company 
uh, and what it uh, really what he was bringing to the town uh, in the development of that company and the purchase of the wharf. And then a wonderful boat called the Concordia 35. The first one was Stardust and Stardust uh, was built in 1939 and she was still owned and sailing in Paid Narrow Harbor until a couple of years ago when the owner, uh, Jack Sumner, moved back to uh, Connecticut. Uh, there was also a lovely boat called uh, Kestrel, uh, which was built for one of the Forbeses over in uh, Norshawn. The uh, trademark of the Concordia Yalls is the star and the moon. It was really Dad's idea of a uh, of an evening sky with the evening star and a crescent moon uh, and that's how that happened to come about. Dad had his dream of, of having a boatyard and uh, in 1941 he got the chance to buy South Wharf from the estate of Colonel Green and um, that was uh, a really wonderful thing for me uh, and his family and also obviously for the town because uh, it became a kind of steadfast uh, place in the town where yachts and yachtsmen, both uh, people from out of town and those in town could uh, have their boats taken care of and built and launched and uh, uh, kept and be entertained and be, I don't know, it was just a wonderful center for um, uh, all of us here in South Dartmouth. After 1941, of course, the war was going on and Dad went off to war and my wonderful Uncle Llewellyn uh, and, and Dad's uh, and Uncle Louie's um, boating partner, Martin Jackson, ran the yard during the war. When, when Dad returned from the war, uh, the Concordia Yalls had gotten started. Uh, one of the um, interesting things that happened after the war uh, was uh, occasioned by Dad's uh, acquaintance with a fellow named Drayton Cochran. And Drady Cochran was a wonderful yachtsman who uh, had the great good fortune to have done a lot of sailing in different parts of the world and was acquainted with a uh, boatyard in Lemwerder, Germany called Abaking and Rasmussen. During, uh, during the Concordia years uh, that I remember in the 1950s, uh, one of the other big memories that I have is Dad took Charlie and me over to Germany to watch these boats uh, being built. In fact, my brother Charlie worked in the Rasmussen yard uh, for a period of time. And uh, you couldn't help but being impressed by the well-organized, um, high-quality work with high-quality materials that, that were being done over there. And these kinds of boats brought to South Dartmouth the kinds of people that a village like ours, a town like ours, would want to attract. Uh, they became, they bought uh, homes and built homes and uh, raised families in Nonquit and Salters Point and in Dartmouth. Um, and uh, it made the village uh, and the boatyard a very nice uh, center of activity for the kinds of people uh, that were very wonderful to have around uh, for the town uh, merchants and uh, obviously for Concordia Company. So it was a very nice uh, feature of those boats that it worked out that way. Uh, one of the things that uh, Concordia did was build uh, Beetle Cats. Uh, Dad had acquired the rights to build Beetle Cats in uh, 1946 from the Beetle Company who was moving over, I believe, uh, towards uh, uh, fiberglass uh, production uh, and uh, away from wood. Dad happened to be a huge believer in wood and uh, the Beetle Cat operation was a wonderful, um, a wonderful uh, operation producing some 70 boats a year in the early days and I think in the 80s still producing some 30 boats a year and uh, they were built originally at Palmer Scott's over in New Bedford and then eventually, I think it was in 1960, 
uh, with Palmer Scott retiring, the operation moved over to Smith Neck um, here in Dartmouth. Uh, and that was an important part of the Concordia Company. Uh, not only was Dad um, importing and finishing off and servicing the Concordia Yalls and the Concordia 31s, but uh, the Beetle Cat business was a very uh, satisfactory part uh, of the operation from a business point of view and also for promoting boating culture uh, in South Dartmouth and, um, and in the various Beetle Cat fleets around on the Cape and in Narragansett Bay. It was a wonderful uh, part of the whole process. Uh, there are a number of uh, personal memories I have about the Concordias. Uh, one is sailing with my grandfather on Java uh, with Captain Hardy, his uh, wonderful skipper from Deer Isle, Maine. Uh, and I remember being uh, uh, slightly nervous as the boat heeled over and the water came up close to the deck and so on. And um, Grandpa wore a uh, deer stalker hat and um, uh, knickers, unbelievably wore knickers, and had a and which made him quite a stylish, if not somewhat eccentric, character in the village. But we had some wonderful sails together, and uh, my brother Charlie and some of the uh, and Peter McDonald and Lloyd McDonald, uh, whose family uh, have uh, been wonderful benefactors of the town and the state. Uh, in uh, the provision of the Demarest Lloyd State Park and in Barney's Joy Beach, uh, raced uh, on Banda with Bill Stetson, who was uh, who was uh, part of Dad's effort to campaign the Concordias and keep them uh, competitive in the New York Yacht Club cruises and in the local Buzzards Bay cruises and elsewhere. As it happened, uh, the Concordias were very successful in the early racing. Uh, um, it really started with Dan Strohmeyer's melee, um, winning the uh, Newport to Bermuda race in 1954. And then Ray Hunt, who was a terrific, not only a marvelous designer, uh, again, a, a genius designer, but also a terrific sailor who knew how to get the most out of his boats when he was racing, uh, swept uh, Cow's Week in England, uh, uh, which is a, a marvelous um, and highly competitive um, uh, series of races uh, off the coast of England in 1955. And there were other triumphs in the Newport or Annapolis Newport race uh, and in the Halifax race. Diablo in 1963. I can't. I don't have all of these races uh, in my memory, but they were very, the Concordias were extremely successful racing boats um, in the uh, 50s and and beyond. It often depended on the on the conditions, the sailing conditions uh, for uh, their performance, because the boat was not really built as a racing boat. It was built to be a good cruising boat with a turn of speed. It was not until, really until later, that boats began to be designed specifically for uh, to be successful ocean racers. Concordia's still had their day in the sun in the racing and continue the, to this day to be wonderful uh, cruising boats. Um, I uh, I'm always proud to see them. They're, they're, they're beautiful boats uh, as well, and uh, they're being preserved in a very nice way by uh, the current owner of Concordia, the Brody McGregor, and uh, some of his syndicate uh, members, including Rusty Ertzen, uh, who are keeping the fleet alive and well, for which uh, we can all be uh, grateful. The Concordia Company has always been a great employer, uh, for the town. There's a yacht brokerage and uh, I think there may even or have been a, a lawyer's office uh, and the post office there on the South Wharf property. Uh, the packet has been an institution in the town for many years. It's now moved off the property but the sail loft has provided many sails for many local boats over many years. Norm Fortier uh, has 
uh, had a place there at South Wharf for decades as well. And Dad gave, uh, I don't know, gave, he, he provided a uh, space for Norm to have his boat uh, called, uh, I believe, the Norman Fortier there at the yard from which Norman would go out and take pictures and his photographs decorated uh, the packet for many years and I believe a book is being put together um, of all his many photographs and of course he's a he's been a very successful watercolorist as well uh, over the years and uh, I dare say that many of the people watching this uh, video have uh, Norman Fortier watercolors in their homes. Uh, he's been a wonderful um, illustrator of this local area for many years. Our family's uh, involvement with Concordia uh, Company proper really ended when Dad retired at the age of 60, which would have been about 1968 when he sold the boatyard to uh, Bill Penny. But we continued to own uh, South Wharf and uh, the neighboring property on which stood uh, a large part of the packet and the sail loft buildings. And uh, it was a wonderful thing uh, to have some stability uh, in the use of the wharf uh, and we continued to work with Concordia Company through a series of leases over time. But eventually uh, the senior generation died. My father and my uncle Llewellyn and my aunt Sally, who uh, who had originally bought uh, the sail loft portion of the yard, were all gone. So that the property was uh, then owned by my father's children and my aunt and uncle's children, and there were a total of eight of us spread out across the country. Uh, uh, and not really, it was not really practical for us to continue to own the property. None of us were in the boatyard business, and uh, uh, it, as as happens, um, shorefront property has become very valuable, and many of the boatyards uh, that are operating today are in fact away from the waterfront because the waterfront, the cost of the waterfront property, uh, is so high. Uh, compared to the amount of remuneration that can be gained from operating a boatyard on the waterfront, that it's a difficult uh, formula in today's world. Well, what to do? Uh, we, loved, uh, we loved the wharf and what it represented. Uh, we loved the boatyard. Uh, we uh, knew full well that the town uh, wanted a boat yard and needed a boat yard and uh, yet uh, there were obligations of the trustees that owned this property for the Howlands uh, to obtain top dollar uh, for the properties. It's a business reality and attempts were made to come to terms with a, an enthusiastic and marvelous group of investors um, uh, to keep uh, the old uh, operations going there, but it was not uh, really possible as a business proposition to bring the two sides together. Um, we, as a family, felt very fortunate to find uh, in Dave Nolan uh, somebody who was obviously committed to waterfront uh, use and uh, could make... Uh, um, uh, uh, common sense and practical economic use of the property as part of his larger operation. And uh, we reluctantly uh, sold the property, but uh, hope that going forward uh, it will continue to serve the town well uh, as a waterfront property uh, providing access uh, to uh, local folks and people from out of town as well and provide a good base of operations here in Paidnerum for uh, Dave's uh, business. Um, it's hard to see things change, uh, but change is inevitable, and um, the world turns, and I think the town uh, uh, will do well to approach the 
regulation of their waterfront uh, in a sensible way which will preserve for the town the uses that it thinks are critical to it. I, I should say, uh, as a member of uh, this generation, uh, that there is a tremendous debt which we owe to my father and mother and my uncle Llewellyn and his wife, uh, my aunt Sally, for all the wonderful uh, connections uh, they've given to our generation and all the um, I having a hard time finding the word, but they were good hosts and introducers of people to this town. I can't tell you the number of times that I've gone to, interestingly enough, bookstores in particular in Newport and here in South Dartmouth and uh, doctors and uh, people that I run into all the time will ask me whether I'm related to Llewellyn Howland or Waldo Howland and there will follow a story of how Uncle Louie or Waldo uh, was very kind to them, showing them a new house, introducing them to a different part of the town where they bought a house, and in general uh, promoting good relationships between new residents of the town and the town itself. Kenny, I really appreciate you telling us all these stories about the boat yard. I've lived here all my life, but I certainly didn't know some of the things that you talked about. And I think it was wonderful, the wrap-up you gave us. And yes, I too hope that Nolan is successful with the boat yard and keeps it as a boat yard and it doesn't become condominiums or something like that. But anyway, we certainly appreciate your sharing your story of the boat yard and your family with us and all the th wonderful things that you've done. And I'm sure that when we put it all together, we will have a great story about Concordia and South Wharf and a tribute to the Howlands who really started it all. It is with great pleasure that we sit on the pier at Bayview looking over the harbor toward Concordia. It's one of the hottest days of the season, and the harbor is filling up with boats for the BBR. I am sitting here with Arthur Correa, formerly the head of the carpentry department at Concordia, and John Wood, the head of the painting crew. John Hi, I'm Arthur, and uh, I've worked for Concordia for 40 years. started back in 1944. Of course, the Concordias were all new, brand new. It was like owning a new car. It even They could even smell like Concordia. And the work we did and the things we did to it, we had to do a good job. There was no two ways about it. I mean, you, I mean, you get a, a boat like a Concordia where everything is so perfect. You've got to do good work, otherwise it doesn't pay. And we took pride in our work. Everybody took pride. From carpenters down to mechanics and laborers and what have you. We all did the best we could, which was terrific as far as I'm concerned. We even did little jobs that the owners didn't uh, have on their list, didn't we, John? Yes, yes. Yeah. Now, uh, John was quite able to do these projects because he uh, he did so many of them so nicely <laughs> and for, for people who didn't expect mm. to have it done. Mm. Now he remembers Dr. Bacon on the Phantom mm. uh, <clears throat> uh, who had a couple of spinnaker poles that he never used I but know. were always sitting on deck. Yeah, They had to be varnished and the brass had to be shined. Had to, uh, yes. We always kitted him that he never used them. It was just put on the deck, but he was a great man. Yeah. He was. Yeah. And then there was things like 
Oil lamps. Oil lamps. Uh, the finish. thresholds going in. And we tried to keep them shined, uh, getting them ready. Yeah, even though the owners didn't ask for that. Uh, no, it's because we took pride in what we did. It was, uh, I was there 13 years or 14 years, and it, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of work, too. <coughs> but, yeah. And uh, we always didn't have the best conditions to work in, too, <laughs> either. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, I think overall, uh, we did a pretty good job. I think we did, and, yeah. And Arthur would make all kinds of little things to put in the boat that the owners wanted. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, it was uh, it was it was good fun. And the people who worked for us, they really took pride in it. And uh, and most of them did a good job. And that sometimes it was not easy to be painting the all of a Concordia when the temperature is 60 degrees and that's not too bad and then all of a sudden the clouds come and the wind changes and you're now in 40 degree weather yeah. and it, it takes some some work to to keep up with it but the customers were the best part of the whole thing we, we, we had a good time with them we had a boat called Armada, which belonged to a Mr. and Mrs. Brown. And they came down in, when their boats was launched. They have come down weekends. And we just made sure that the Browns had gas and water and ice aboard. In fact, they had a, an ice bucket that, we, that I did anyway. I chopped up the ice into smaller pieces. And, put it into this bucket so they could have when they come down, which they appreciated, you know. We had all the sails bent and fastened, all the gear aboard in the, in the spring. So it was quite a job. Yeah, it was we used quite to take, a lot of work. Yeah, we used to take all the little pieces of wood that come detached from like into, into the paint shop where it could be done out of the wind and so forth and, and uh, that helped a, a big, yeah. big time um, but it was the customers it really was and, um, I can remember one of them in a hurricane went up on the on the beach in front of the yacht club and I can't think of the name of the boat at the moment, but the tow rail was broken, and we we Arthur fixed the tow rail, and I took a piece of the old tow rail, <clears throat> the yellow boat, yeah. Melita, 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 yeah. and uh, I I I took a piece of the the tow rail that was, was broken, and I sanded it and finished cleaned it up, drilled a hole in the top. And it was a yellow boat, and I put a yellow fountain pen on it and a plaque on it that said Hurricane 90, what, yeah. whatever the year it yeah. was, 90, 94, 5, but yeah, Hurricane Bob, and uh, with that plaque on it and put it on the boat when they came down to get it on the heat, they, they were, with a yellow fountain pen and he just, he was beside himself. And we had a we had a Concordia um, a varnished hull, a wrapper hull, and uh, the last people that I knew who owned it were were terrific people, and she loved macaroons. <laughs> yeah. And I knew that they were coming down for, to see the boat. So lunchtime, I went down to a stopping shop and I bought a big belt of macaroons and put it on the table in the galley, <laughs> and that went over big too. But it was that kind of thing it that was, was that, fun. Yes, it was that kind of thing that, mm. that they appreciated, you know, mm. and then, things that they didn't ask for. They appreciated. Uh, 
I would assume that some of that kind of thing is done now, but maybe, maybe it is. I doubt it. I doubt it. It's, uh, it's an altogether different breed of people mm. now that. Yeah, could be. You know, they yeah. could they just be. want to put the eight hours in and get out of there. Yeah. But, uh, uh, but the owners are what made the owners are what made that job pleasant. Yeah, pleasant, right? All good owners. And they never, they give you the devil if you didn't do something right, but they, 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 generally they were good, great people. There was a customer that owned a Concordia and he had a, he had a funny tea kettle, it was copper, with a long spout that went like this, so the water wouldn't fall out when it was on the thing. And it had never been shined. And I took it in one year and shined it, and I just couldn't believe it that it could look so nice. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Those were the fun things to do. Yeah. And they appreciated it, you know? Yeah. They appreciated it. Yeah, they did. It. They did. Yeah. That made but things other, interesting. Other, other than that, the work was sand and paint <laughs> and <laughs> vacuum and, and paint and sand some more. And Vacuum more. It was quite a job to to uh, to keep them clean uh, and have them look nice when they're outside in the element. Uh, you're at the you're at the mercy of the weather, and I think overall we did a pretty good job. Arthur, Arthur would put the things back in the boat in the spring, just like they were taken just, off. Yeah, it was yeah. unbelievable. Uh, I don't know how you kept. Uh, uh, you kept that after after you left. It was uh, Mary Jane did yeah. that kind of thing, yeah. and she did a good job. She really did a good job doing that. Well, Concordias were outside of the fact that some were forty ones, but mm. the average were thirty nines, and they were all practically the same. You know, sure. They had a couple of bunks forward, a couple of bunks in the main cabin, and bunks that folded down and. And the so difference between the 41 and the 39 was unbelievable. It doesn't sound like it. It doesn't sound like anything one. at all, but the 41 was but so much, so much bigger. more room inside. And Wider. And mm -hmm. Yeah, made a big difference. Made a big difference. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that when I put the stuff away, you put everything away a certain way. Then it came spring, you put it back where it was, you know? So that when the customer came in, he says, hey, Art, I can't find my bar to close the forward hatch. And I would say, starboard, forward cabin, main sh and the shelf, and they would find it. <laughs> I did it to all of them, mm. so that I knew exactly where they were, you know? And uh, they thought it was great that I could remember all those boats, you know? Yeah. <coughs> it was the same I don't thing. know how you did it. I could never have done it. Was it was all the same thing. <laughs> But they were they were very appreciative of the, if the and, if the boat it, looked good and the shine. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> the boat out in the harbor right now is one of the few field that's left. In this harbor, right. there's still a lot. Yeah. Still a lot. And, yeah, and uh, west. they used to make what twenty five or thirty a year. Well, one year after the hurricane, I remember them making over a hundred. Leo, Leo really worked those guys, you know, and they got over a hundred boats. Yeah. And the painting crew, when things were slow in the winter, would go down and paint them and get the beetle cats ready, um, and that was fun. Um, what was I going to say? Now, you don't remember the shed down at the end of the wharf where we stored beetles? Well, we used to do mass down there. No, this, get... this is this is a, they used to call it the fish shed. Oh no! Where, they, where we had stalls just for beetles. Mm. And in the winter, we would we would go down there and sand. We had an old cook stove oh. that we used for heat. Yeah. Uh, Bob Simmons and I would bring. We'd go home for lunch and come back with a couple of potatoes and throw them in the fire and. <laughs> After a while, we started eating potatoes. <laughs> but 
we would work on the beetles and work on getting those all ready for spring. That was before I was born. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a long time ago. That was long. Then, then the hurricane came and swept those all off the wall. Yep. Yeah. And a lot, there were a lot of Concordia, I don't know how many, I shouldn't say a lot, but there were quite a, there were quite a few on the west coast now. Yeah. I remember when they shipped one on the trailer with the nose down to clear wires and stuff, otherwise they couldn't, mm. you know. So they put it with the nose down and they shipped it. Her name was Irene, if I believe. Went out the west coast. Oh. Yeah. Yes. I know that one of the former Concordia owners turned to a he changed to a Block Island 40 and his boat went out to the west coast to Concordia and he went out west because the sun was out there and the, he didn't know it but the sun arranged with the owner of his old boat and they went for a sail on it. He, he couldn't believe it. He had a great time. Nice, nice people. Quite a scene. Well, it's a beautiful harbor. I can't, I can't get away from it. Yeah, it sure will be different. Mm -hmm.